I'm just loading up my kit ready for a full week of filming in Oxford. My shoot this week is one of those clients where you do the same kind of thing for them every few weeks. And so I've spent the last couple of years trying to get the whole process as polished as possible. I drove up to see a mate the night before so that I could try out his new camera bag that fits most of my equipment in. I loved it, ordered one already. But anyway, welcome to Oxford. I'm on a five day shoot in Oxford this week, which is where I used to live for a few years pre-COVID, so it's always nice coming back here. Staying with some friends just outside Oxford. It is 6.45 a.m. and I'm about to go in for the day. I'm filming this week with one of my regular clients who work together every two or three months and we film online course content. He's a professor and he's got thousands of students from all over the world enrolling in these online courses. And so over the next five days, we're filming 30, 35 lectures to go onto this online course platform. These kind of weeks are always really good because we've done, we've already done eight or nine um, of these courses over the last few years. And so we've got a bit of a process nailed down for how to do these really well. Um, and so we absolutely smash through filming the content over the few days. So it should be a good week. And I'm gonna bring you along and show you just a bit behind the scenes of how we set up and film this kind of content. We shoot these in a pretty small space. So my challenge is to make it look as nice as possible without totally taking over all the floor space. I try to shoot into corners when I'm in these kind of smaller rooms. It seems to make the room feel slightly bigger and gives the shot a little bit more depth as well. We use a big table or desk to put the course notes on, which helps make a bit of a frame for the professor. I use a rough three point setup for the lighting. So my key is an Aperture 300X with a light dome and a grid on. To save space, I bounce my little panel fill light into the wall rather than needing extra diffusion for the fill. And then I have a power tube on the ground at the back to light the back wall and be a slight backlight at the same time. My audio for this is a Rode NTG5 on a boom pole cabled into my Zoom F6 recorder. I always try and run two sources of audio, so I've got a backup wireless lav mic as well, just in case anything goes wrong with the main audio. I've been using the Rode Wireless Go system for the last couple of years, but switched to the DJI mics last week, and they've been fantastic so far. They just seem a little bit easier to use, they've got a touchscreen on them, and they come with an AirPod style charging case that lets me charge everything all at once, rather than plugging in loads of cables. My camera rig is an A7S III with a 50mm f1.4 on there. It's slightly ND'd to block a bit of the light out. And then I've got my new favorite monitor, the Atomos Shinobi 7 on top. The Shinobi 7 has got HDMI and SDI in, but then it also has HDMI SDI out. So I can run video into the monitor, view it, and then loop it out of the monitor into a second smaller monitor for the client to see during the shoot. We film 10 to 15 lectures per day, so I have my iPad out all the time, keeping track of all the content and any details I need to remember for the edit. The whole system seems to work pretty well. I think one of the things I've really been learning recently, particularly doing more and more of these kind of shoots where you're doing similar stuff over and over again, is the value of systems and processes. There's so many people on YouTube talking about productivity and how to optimize your life and all that kind of thing. And I just think there's some real value there, not in everything. And I think sometimes productivity can be overused to the point of let's make all of our life completely productive. I think in our day to day, we've got the work that is a little bit more systematized, a little bit more mundane, a little bit more process, repeat work, same thing over and over and over. And then we've got the more bespoke stuff. And I'm not even just talking about work. You know, we've got things like friendships and relationships, um, dreaming and planning about the future and all that kind of thing. Like we do that kind of stuff every day, but it's not processes. It's not mundane, it's not boring and it shouldn't necessarily be productive. I think that the general goal, as far as I can see it, for productivity is to make the systems and processes that you do have as efficient as possible so that you create space for the more bespoke areas of your work and your life. Um, and I think this kind of job that I'm doing this week has really helped me develop that a little bit. And I, I've worked with this particular client probably 10 times now. And each time we do four or five days in a block of filming, similar kind of thing, creating this course content. Um, and each time we've done it, something's got a little bit better. Something's got a bit more polished. 
and I think there, there is real value in sticking in the time to work out how to make your equipment as fluid as possible so that it just works. Work out how to make your, um, your process for how you're going about filming or editing something as slick as possible so that each time you do it there's less friction. I think often we, we don't want to put in that hard work at the start to figure something out. But if you spend three hours fixing a problem that's going to save you 10 minutes every time you do it, then over the weeks, over the months, you very quickly start saving that time and it ends up saving you far more than the three hours you initially put into fixing the problem. So I just think that's something that's really worth thinking about. And this kind of job that I'm doing this week has really helped me with that. It's Thursday afternoon and we've just finished, just wrapped up, which means we finished a whole day early, which is cool. We managed to get through all the content way quicker than we expected. So I'm just packing up all the kit and was planning on going home this evening, but I've just had two more Oxford-based clients get in touch, asking if there's any chance I can shoot with them tomorrow. And so I've just been trying to figure all that out. Bunch of phone calls and it sounds like they're going ahead. So I've replaced one day of work with another day of work, which is great. So I'm gonna stick around and do those two shoots tomorrow. These two final jobs for the week were both pretty quick B-roll jobs. The first was just doing some extra B-roll for a client that I'm mid-production on another video for them. So we went into Oxford Centre, got the footage we needed. It was a great opportunity to test out my new V-mount battery rig that I've got for the camera before I use it for a wedding at the weekend. And then afterwards, I actually edited everything together with the client on site, which isn't something I usually do, but it meant that we could finalise the product on the same day, just get it all finished. And then the other job was a last minute thing to get some footage at an event that the professor from my main gig this week was being interviewed at. And they just found out that I'd been filming with him all week, so they asked me to come back in to cover this event. It went well, mixture of gimbal, handhelds and tripods, no editing needed. They just want the raw footage. So a nice, simple evening. So I am all, I am all wrapped up in Oxford after five days of pretty intense filming with three different clients across five days. Um, now heading back to London and got a half day off tomorrow before filming a wedding on Sunday. So bit of a busy week, but being good fun. Saturday evening was prepping for the wedding. My new bag that I'd ordered arrived while I was gone. So I moved all my kit over to that for the wedding, recharged everything and was good to go. I didn't film much behind the scenes at the wedding. It was a full on day of nonstop filming. I didn't have a second shooter and solo weddings are always pretty intense, but it went well. I got some great footage and now have a nice long list of videos to edit. This week has been more intense than most weeks. I don't normally film on six out of seven days in a week, but it's been great. Hopefully it's been an interesting window into how these kind of projects pan out. Let me know if you have any questions at all, but otherwise have a great day and I'll see you soon.